Hello and welcome back. This week we're going to have a, a quick look at the chuff chuff sound which came along in the early 70s. But firstly, we'll just get this pannier tank through points number five here onto the passing loop and then we'll bring her to a gentle stop. There we go. And then we'll switch the points again and we'll move her back onto that spur that I pointed out when we were having a look at the track plan just a few weeks ago. I wish I'd made this so much longer we, we could have taken much more advantage of it and she'll come to a stop as soon as she runs onto that isolating track there. There we go. And we'll open points 11 and number 13 and we'll bring out the old Princess Elizabeth which is fitted with the, the wonderful Chuff Chuff sound. There we go, you just listen to that. Nice and smoothly through the points, looking absolutely terrific coming through there, doesn't she, with those coaches. And we'll switch those points behind her. So when we were looking at the pannier tank last week and I was pointing at the instructions, I pointed out an item and called it a smoke unit. And in fact it was the exhaust steam sound unit, which was fitted to the tender in the, in the models in the early 70s. We'll just go through points number seven there. She slows down a little with the weight of the coaches through those double points. Nice and smoothly through there. As I mentioned a little earlier, we're going to have a look at the exhaust steam sound. But I mentioned a, a smoke unit by accident when looking at the instructions for this model last week. Oh, 51S, clearly the, this model doesn't have exhaust steam sound, it just doesn't, it doesn't have the, the space for the unit. Let's just pop that down. When I was looking at the instructions and I, I folded it out to look at the, the inner pages, I just pointed to this and, and said, that was a smoke unit, I was mistaken. And that is the exhaust steam sound unit there. We can see the, the diagram with the, the scraper on the wheel there and the, the sound box. And we'll, we'll have a look at one of those at the moment. And that's the, the related text there. So we'll just fold that over. And then we'll, we'll have a look at the, the old instructions for the, for the princess here. So it's a very similar instruction sheet. And it's had a, a sticker stuck on it here about how to make adjustments if your, your power connecting clip becomes loose. But quite interesting that there was a change in the power connecting clip between 72 and 73. So that's reflected in the, the slightly different diagrams on there for the power connecting clip. I wasn't aware of that until I looked at both of these sheets together. I, I've never really been aware of that style of power clip. I've never seen one, but I'm quite familiar with this sort of triangular shaped one. Well, we'll just pop those down and just have a look at the inner pages of the instructions that come with the, the old princess. And again, it's got the, the same diagram. The inside pages do seem to be the same on this instruction sheet. So on the back pages, we might as well have a look at them whilst we're here. We've got a, a slight change in, in the name of the company. Uh, we'll have a quick look at those side by side. Here on the 72 sheet we've just got Rovex. And on the 73 sheet we've got the, the change in name there to Rovex Limited. And we'll just pop these sheets down. So this is the old Princess and we had this one in the video when we were looking at the level crossings. It's quite a, a worn model and I said when I got it it was a non-runner and did have a lot of what may have been cat hair or carpet hair in the model but let's have a, have a look at this. So we've got exhaust steam sound in the tender here and we've got this wonderful blue sticker here telling us that. She also has the synchro smoke if we run it quick enough. So we'll just pull out the old tender. If you want to see this model in a little more detail I'll leave a, vink, uh, a link to, to the earlier video just so you, you can have a look and there we have the exhaust steam sound see that scraper there as it runs around gives you that that, that wonderful noise very, very similar to putting cigarette cards or football cards on your, on your, on your bicycle spokes I suppose yeah, really simple and enough to drive you mad just have a look at that very very simple isn't it Now, I've just taken the old securing screw out of the bottom of the tender there. So we'll, we'll just pop that down and we'll gently lift off the top of the tender here. Off it comes. And now we can see the, the sound box. 
Have a quick look inside the tender there. So they must have had to redesign these tenders slightly to fit in the, these sand boxes and also the tender bases, I think, to allow this little brass or copper strip to protrude through the bottom there. So the vibrations carried through there on, onto this box here. So see if I can lift that out. You can hear it making noise as it, as it scrapes across there. It's very effective, isn't it? Just same principle as, as an old fashioned gramophone, really, I suppose. We've got the old weight there. I think that may be glued in. And the, the, the hole through the, the tender base there, which must have had to involve a redesign of, of a number of tenders. So I think exhaust steam sound came along in 1971. And from what I read, there were models, I think the B12 made it through into the 21st century with still with steam sound being produced in China. I'm not sure of the dates when the other models finished, but there's a whole whole bunch of them in 1971. The Flying Scotsman, B12 and the Albert Hall. I'm not sure whether the, the um, Winston Churchill ever got the steam sound. Uh, so it's open at that end there. And I think I just rub the fingernail along it there. You can see that how that works, it's a great thing. You can just see here that it's got this abrasive texture being glued to it and it's just begun to, to wear away there. This is the tender to an Albert Hall from 1977 from the old Jubilee set that I have. Now, the, all the abrasive texture had worn away from the strips. I've, I've just stuck a little piece of sandpaper on there just to, to, to give it the, try and give it some life back. You can see how that works. It works reasonably well. I'm not entirely sure it was exactly as it was when it came out of the factory, but it, it does give the effect. I've already removed the screw, so we'll just take that away and see we've got exactly the same arrangement on the inside there. And we'll just lift off the, the sound box. Let's see the, the tender has been designed with a hole right the way through there. And we've got the, the scraper just clipped onto the onto the sleeved wheels there. And just pop that down. And there's the old sound box and you can see. I've just stuck in that, that piece of abrasive paper there. And we just get that effect there. So I just resurrected it. It, it, it does quite a good effect. Just catching up with the Princess Elizabeth there with the three LMS Marine coaches. Just listen to the change in sound here. But she slows down to negotiate that incline. And just listen to it again. She, she pick up a little extra speed as she levels out at the top there. From what I read, this chuff chuff sound was just added to, to make the system more, more appealing to children and, and boost sales, I think, in the, in the early 70s. I imagine many people bought models with this feature and, and took out the sound box. As well as the models mentioned, I think uh, the Transcontinental Pacific had, had this uh, exhaust steam sound when she had the, the Scotsman tender. And I think Lord Westwood also came with exhaust steam sound, but uh, it's, it's a great thing to have, quite a novelty, and I've enjoyed playing with it today. I think that's probably about it for this week, but I thought we'd better have a look at the old 1971 catalogue, the first year that the Chuff Chuff sound became available. If we open this up, have a look at page three there, they're highlighting a number of other features for that year, but the one we're concerned with here today is the old chuff chuff sound here, exhaust steam sound generator. Five steam locomotive tenders have been fitted with this exciting new feature for 1971. So we'll just flip through and have a, have a look at the old catalogue. Perhaps if I put that down, we can, we can see things a bit more clearly. Of course, a number of other, other new features this year, or new models. We've got the, the Evening Star, and we've got the old King George here. Neither of these models could be fitted with the, the exhaust steam sound, as the Evening Star had the, the new Ringfield motor in, in the tender, and the, the King George inherited an old Hornby 00 tender. It was cast metal, I think, and I don't think that could be remodeled to, to take the sound box. So we'll just have a look over here. I know we've got the old Princess, 
as we've had running on the layout today and so she was available with exhaust steam sound and not only that it, it indicates here that the tenders may have been available as a, as a separate separate item so you could up, upgrade a model already if you had the, the princess without steam sound you could just buy yourself a new tender and it seems to be the case for the Albert Hall as well again we've got that all important symbol down here and the, the separately available tender down there and just moving over here to page 7 we've got the the wonderful Flying Scotsman in apple green and the B12 indicated here that both of these would have exhaust steam sound and, and separately available tenders. What, what a brilliant idea. We'll just have a look at the next page. I don't think we ever got the to diesel sound. So we'll just slide this over and we'll have a look at the old Britannia here. So again, it indicated here that she's available with exhaust steam sound. I don't think she had exhaust steam sound for very long because she was one of the models which was introduced to the, the, the Hornby Railways Silver Seal range and she, she gained a motor in the tender quite early on I think. Um, so at some point it seems she was available with exhaust steam sound. I haven't come across one myself but what a great thing. So as I said I think that's about it for this week. If you look back again next week we'll have something else from the Trying Hornby or maybe the, the early Hornby Railways period. I'll just leave you with a, with a closer look at that fantastic painting. <laughs>